So we are very honored to have Kara with us today who will uh, share more about access. Thank you very much, Kara. Floor okay. is yours. Well, thank you so much. That was a great intro. <laughs> and I'm glad that, that, I'm, that my name <coughs> and Max, I, I will talk about her today. So before I start, I just would like to say thank you. Thank you very much um, for including Access Serve. For this opportunity, but also the work that the Red Cross does. We are huge, huge fans here. And unfortunately, my operations director isn't here at the moment, but when she heard I was presenting, she's like, I, I, that's my, I, you know, one of her most favorite. So the great work that you all do, and I just wanted to say thank you for what you do. And obviously this opportunity today to talk about what we do at Access Surf. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and I'm a little bit technically, you know, not always the most savvy, but let's see how we go here. Um, can you see my screen? Okay, if not, can someone let me yeah. know verbally? Okay, yeah. great. Perfect. And um, yeah, and I do apologize the way that my slides look, they're kind of, they're not full screen, but you know, we'll go along with it. Um, so I wanted to start um, by just sharing quickly what our mission is um, with Access Surf. And then of course, I'd like to get into what our history is, how we got started, um, and then, you know, what we do today. So of course, here's our mission, which is Access Surf builds an inclusive community that empowers people with disabilities through accessible beach and water programs. And in a snapshot, what that means is we're doing a multiple different water sports, um, surfing being one of our signature sports, of course it's in our name, but we also do swim and outrigger canoe paddling programs. Um, but really one of the main things, and you'll hear me say this a lot throughout this entire you know time that we have together, getting in the water is, is amazing and, and transformative and all of those things, but really the, the main thing with Access Surf is our community and building community, which also therefore, of course, creates inclusion and creates empowerment and so on and so forth. So that's our that's our um, our mission. And here's some great photos of some of the people in our programs. And before I go too far into all the other stuff, I wanted to give you a little intro into me um, and how and why I got why I got involved with Access Surf and I guess also my why why I continue uh, with leading with so much passion because we are quite a small organization as Anne Marie mentioned in the intro there we do a lot of programs we're actually last year we looked at our report and we did 95 program days last year uh, which is an incredible amount um, and we have a small staff but we have a large volunteer base but um, but um, so this picture is of my niece who Emery mentioned in, in the intro and her name is Shane and she was born with severe cerebral palsy and I'm from Canada and Shane grew up in a very small landlocked town in Canada um, but she's was you know my heart and soul for a lot of years um, and when I very first started with Access Surf as a volunteer it was because I saw a poster and I thought, oh my goodness, this looks like an amazing program. Let's go check it out. And of course we did, my husband and I, and immediately all I could think about was, my goodness, wouldn't this be amazing if Shane had something like this where we live? Of course it wouldn't be an adaptive surfing program, but just anything, any kind of a community, any kind of an activity, especially an outdoor activity, um, because to this day, there still isn't, there's nothing in our area, you know, where we grew up, um, for people with disabilities. And the other thing of Access Surf is that the programs are free. So there's no fee for the families and, and so on and so forth. So something like this was such an important thing. And so she is my, my, my reason why. And this amazing picture is really exciting because it, um, you know, all of the years I would go to programs and I would just always think about her um, all the time. And then until 2017, um, make a wish she came out with make a wish and this is my family you can see from our picture here we're very excited <laughs> um, so it was a really incredible joyous moment for all of us and what I want to note about this is in this sort of you'll hear this kind of throughout like what the core of access surf is of course when she, you know when Shane was able to get into the water you know that smile come she was nonverbal, but you know lots of voice lots of um sounds you know and there was a lot of joyous sounds coming uh, from her to be in the ocean but the thing that was incredible really was the volunteers and watching the way that they responded to her the way they spent so much attention with her and i'm telling you this because i'm someone that's been volunteering for years 
but to have that fam be part of the experience as the family member was truly life changing um, for myself, but also Shane's family and her parents talk about this all the time. What they've learned at Access Surf was that Shane was it was different but not different, you know what I mean? Like that she was included, she was accepted. She wasn't the standout um, person because unfortunately, you know, her whole life, they anywhere time they would go someplace in public, maybe not any time, but a lot of the time, you know, they would actually have a lot of issues with either accessibility, which we'll talk about, um, but also just acceptance and people, you know, saying things like, hey, you know, she shouldn't be out here or at the restaurant or just crazy things. Um, but here they come, they come to Hawaii, they come to Access Surf, and there was literally a lineup of people to meet them. Um, granted, she was a special guest, but still, it, that's just, that's the core of what our programs are. So it's very special. Um, and I'm very, you know, sadly, she passed away a couple of years after this, but we will always have this memory and this moment and something that we, you know, just hold so true in our hearts. So, and so shout out to Make-A-Wish also for making that happen. So that's my why, and that's why I continue to lead with so much passion um, for Access Surf and our programs. So now the next thing I wanted to show you was just some of our key words um, and, and actually how Access Surf got started. So in 2006, our co-founders, Mark Marble, who's a certified recreational therapist, um, he was working for Shriners at that time, but he had worked quite a bit with the Rehab at the Pacific. Um, you know, he was working with people transitioning post-injury back to their life and what have you. And he was realizing that the majority of the people who he's working with, although they live here in Hawaii and were surrounded by incredible beaches and oceans and, and beach parks and what have you, most people were not going to the ocean. They were not going to the beach parks. And the main reason that came across was they didn't have access, whether it was a, the physical barriers, the support that they may need, and they also were not comfortable um, asking their family members for a myriad of reasons. So that was, so Mark as a therapist connected with Rich, who's in this picture here, you can see him in, in the, you know, he's the one pointing out, um, he's doing an instruction at this surf clinic. Uh, Rich is an adaptive athlete. He grew up here in Hawaii, um, surfer his entire life, um, had a tragic accident when his late teens, um, hit by a drunk driver and was paralyzed. And for many, many, many years after that, he did not go surfing. He did not go to the ocean, to the beach, into the ocean. And again, the same reasons why the other people that Mark was working with, there wasn't that access. And he also, back then, there wasn't the movement quite as much for adaptive sports programs. And I know I keep using the word adaptive. Um, it's a general term, I know, but basically what it means is modified. The way that we'll modify the equipment, the way we modify the style of the surfing or the paddling or what have you. So it's a general term, but it really helps sum up um, what we're doing. So Rich, back then, you know, adaptive sports, it was there were some land based sports and he himself was a, an adaptive tennis player, but there really wasn't much happening in the ocean in the ocean. So those two with a group um, of doctors and other therapists and many other people, it wasn't just the two of them, um, but they certainly are our figureheads. So Mark Marble and Rich Julian are our co-founders. And that's how it started. 2006, there was a small day at the beach, which is our signature program today. It's called Day at the Beach. Um, five people probably maybe 10 volunteers, you know, a few trucks and some duct tape and a couple of boards. And that's what started Access Surf. And from then on, um, needless to say, things didn't that slowly grow. I mean, it grew quite fast, let's say. Uh, started off slowly, but then quickly uh, gained momentum. And um, so we're still here based on Oahu. The main, uh, almost all of our programs are here on Oahu. We have done some pilot programs on the neighbor islands, but um, we're still in the position where we're still, you know, getting our, you know, good foundation here on Oahu before we actually branch out officially to the neighbor islands. So cross our fingers, that can happen one day. Um, so that's how we started. And then over the years, you know, it just, it grew and grew and grew. And how we've grown and what we always come back to and we always base everything that we do on are some of our core values. And that's what these words are, the inclusion, the empowerment, the accessibility, awareness, acceptance, education, community. And what each of those words mean for us um, and, and Access Surf, it's those, 
those are also broad terms, which I understand, but it's been a fun being part of the development of the organization from my standpoint, because whenever we're looking to do anything new or to grow anything, we always come back to these words because it's so important. It's more than getting in the water. It's more than a day at the beach. What we've realized over the years is the power of our programs to change lives well beyond that program day, whether it's for the participant, their family, the volunteers, the beachgoers, our supporters, whatever it might be, the 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 ripple effect is huge, and we've and we've done many, many, several you know surveys of course, and then some focus groups, and wow, it was impressive to hear how life changing our programs are for people, and again, it starts with that simple concept. Let's go to the beach. How do we get to the beach? Well, you know, of course, there's the physical barriers if um, you're an individual that's using a mobility device, but then there's also other um, sensory barrier barriers and just and um, social barriers and all of these different things that we really work and strive to overcome constantly, which really comes into that diversity um, um, and inclusion and what have you. So when we use the word accessibility, it means all kinds of things to us. So we often use the, the term all the time does it provide access? Are we providing access? And by that, it could be these physical barriers. So I'll show you um, at the next slide some of how we overcome some of those physical barriers with beach mats and beach chairs. But a lot of the time it's also communication. You know, is somebody hard of hearing? Is somebody visually impaired? Um, different languages, that's a different one. We're still working on that, of course. Uh, but um, but all these things that we, you know, we always want to be thinking and, and we don't always have those answers. And that's why we're very, um, we we often the word well, actually we have we use the word innovative quite a bit and we actually even have an innovation specialist uh, because we're always having to create new things prior to access surf there was only a handful of organizations worldwide doing adaptive water sports um, and on a very small scale so we really have been a pioneer um, a proud pioneer and now when we look um, at the scale of what's grown around the world it's really been very proud for everybody to to be um, to be the role models, and we often get asked, of course, to to help and train different organizations. So, these are the words that that we really make sure that we're always coming back to, and and making sure that if we're starting to go too far one way or another as we develop programs, that we always really make sure that we pay attention to. And when I say community on there. Um, and when we say, um, you know, we really are really talking about being inclusive for everyone. So we are who we serve, and I'll get to that a little bit more too, who we serve as a population is anyone with any disability. And that also includes our volunteer base. So we cannot run our programs without our volunteers. So as mentioned, we have a very small staff, but we have layers and layers and layers of volunteers and volunteer committees and groups and so on and so forth, as I'm sure you all do at Red Cross as well. But we literally cannot do our programs without our volunteer base. And when people ask us, well, who can volunteer? Who can get involved? What does that look like? We literally say anyone. And I will talk a little bit more about the volunteer roles in a little bit. But the other one of those reasons is we need and want all of those people. But again, it comes back to building community and inclusion where it's not separated. So we're very integrated, integrated, like it's not separate. Like, OK, you're a participant. You come, we help you. You go over there. Like everyone is very together. It's a very much a family and and most often um, or very often people who come as a participant, they'll very much get involved and become volunteers and mentors and so on and so forth. So um, so that's sort of a, in a snapshot beyond just the programs here's what we do here's how you find out our information this is like the core and the integrity of access surf and why our programs are so important so this picture is a fun one um, this is rich julian giving a surf lesson and this is a, um, a special group actually that comes annually from craig rehab hospital so we do a multi-day adaptive surf camp um, with um, some cohorts from Craig Rehab Hospital. So this is Rich talking about water conditions and all of those things. So, and then if any of you, you know, um, are people that go to the beach or go to the ocean, um, what have you, you certainly probably immediately understand 
the need for these programs. And anyone that's not so much into that, the next level I want to say is, again, and I keep talking about it, but why the, these programs are so important is the community parts. So we'll have people come to our programs and not even get in the water. They'll just come and hang out and talk story, get a burger, hang out. And that is huge. And that's a big win for all of us. So anyway, OK, so this next one kind of shows um, as best as I could a few different ways that we work with people and we pro provide some um, accessibility. So down here on the bottom left or left to how I'm seeing it, you, it's um, just this is us setting up and those are the beach mats that we use. So when we show up to a program and most of our programs are at White Plains Beach Park um, near Kapolei area. We have gone to different locations on the island. There are some challenges for us because our group size is so big. So for example, our day at the beach program will have about 300 people each month. That's with the volunteers and the participants. So we can't really rock up to just any old beach and not have, um, and you know, and just do that. So White Plains is our, is our home base. So these beach mats we roll out each time. We are hoping, We've worked with city and county and the state for some permanent beach mats around the island. Um, there's some you know, pros and cons to that, and we're, we've made some successes, but we are actually looking to spend some more time on some advocacy work um, in the near future now that we have a little bit more support from a staff side. So someone like me in my position, I can actually start to talk about more permanent beach access to with our beaches um, in Hawaii because we don't have very good access. But so what we do, we roll out these mats and then up here in the top uh, right hand corner, you can see our beach chairs. And that is how we transport people um, up and down the beach, across the sand and in and out of the water for anyone that needs some assistance. Um, and then up in the, the, the left corner, you see that beautiful smile of Bennett is his name and he's on the surfboard. And this is a style of uh, what we call a transfer and how we help people in and out of the water. So this is a, not everyone. It's not easy for everyone to go in the beach chair. So we always have to be adapting and modifying how we're doing things. And this is just an example of that. So this is what we call the royal carry. And this is Bennett being royally carried. And he's one of our favorites, of course. And the, this uh, picture over here in the bottom right is showing another way that we've adapt that we're adapting because um, not everyone can lay on their stomach. Not everyone, you know, can have the water in their face and so on and so forth. So this was somebody that was visiting from North Carolina um, and just adore him. And so here's our volunteers really going the extra mile. Leah is being a safety seat. Um, and then, of course, we have James from Make-A-Wish actually on the back. But just to show you kind of how we have to always be very diversified in how we are um, supporting our community and supporting the people who we do our programs with. And then, of course, this is this is one of my favorite pictures. I feel like this smile right here. I don't know if you guys can see with my arrow, but it just says it all, doesn't it? Like if you're wondering what does Access Surf do, this smile is it. <laughs> um, this guy, this gentleman was visiting um, from the mainland as well. His name was Colin, and it was such an incredible moment to be with him the first time he'd ever been on the ocean. And I'm going to tell you. It's not just his family because it's happened a lot, but his family was just on the shore just crying because they just couldn't believe that this was happening. That, you know, not only was Colin in the ocean, but here he was in Hawaii, surfing waves in Hawaii. So this was very exciting. This was at Publix um, in, uh, in Waikiki area. So I talked about the population that we serve. And when I said we serve anyone with any disability, that a, a physical, cognitive, psychosocial, what have you, which makes us very unique in what we do. Um, and um, really opens up the door for a lot of people, any age, gender, gender, any financial background, anything, anyone is welcome to come to our programs. Um, and again, as I mentioned, they're all, we, we do a lot of funding, we do a lot of fundraising in order for our programs to continue to be free for our participants. And again, it comes back to that volunteer base that is the next line here on how we run our programs. And it's again, not done without our volunteers. Um, and there's literally hundreds, of, well, a thousand. And um, some of it's on, on site the day of, but really a lot of where the magic happens is these behind the scenes meetings and it's layers and layers of committee meetings um, and pe everyone having their own section and then kind of working from there. At our program days, we will actually break up into different areas so at a day at the beach, which is our signature program, um, we'll have our volunteers in like water safety, swim, 
surf instructor on land, helping with equipment, helping with check-in, helping with the barbecue tent. So we create this whole atmosphere. It's a just a it's a we call it day at the beach because that's exactly what it is. It's just a day to come out and everyone be together. And we will have many, many, many people come, if not the majority, where this may be the one day of the entire month that they are outside doing an outdoor activity outside at a park. Um, so again, it's a very important that programs like this continue. Um, and again, it's it's all it's also a lot of fun. So if, if anyone's on this call that's interested in volunteering, um, I will say, uh, you know, not to toot our own horns, but it is an awful lot of fun. <laughs> you know, everyone's having a good time. Everyone's got this smile. Like, look at Colin's face. Who doesn't want to be part of that? You're at the beach. You know, it's it's a really exciting. Now, I will also tell you, it's a lot of work because we've got to build that access surf city every every event, and then we've got to do all this stuff, and then we've got to tear it all down and bring it all back. So. Uh, volunteering is a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, <laughs> but it's definitely a lot of fun. And I can get into, and if anyone has, I'm not going to get too into detail about all the different rules because there's so many different things. But it, of course, um, I'll have our website and stuff up at the end of this, but please feel free to contact me um, or our team to ask more details about exactly like all the different areas and how people can get involved. But I will let you know it's on land or in the water. Um, and then even if you're like, hey, I'm not really a beach person. I don't even necessarily want to be there because of the sun or what have you. We have a ton of behind the scenes stuff where we're always needing help um, here in the office um, or just doing different things um, throughout the year, helping with fundraiser events or, you know, just a lot of different things. And we also do a lot of different studies. So we're always looking for people to help our, um, our volunteer research team as well. And with our training, I'm sure some of you are wondering, how does that work? We have all of these people from all over the island, all different backgrounds, and not necessarily with a, with a background working with people with disabilities or, you know, that, that kind of um, a background, which is okay. And we, we, we encourage for everyone to come. But how we've done our training is from professionals. So it's been built over the years and years and years, and we are continuously um, changing and refining and improving um, our training process. So in a snapshot, you know, you're a new volunteer, you fill out some forms, and then we have a virtual welcome. Here's Access Serve. Here's our programs. Quick, we talk about customs and courtesies as number one because that's one of our main things, is how we how we work with um, our community, and that's about how we communicate with people dis with disabilities and how that's an inclusive conversation, um, and how we're there to help, but we're there to meet friends. And it's not just like, hey, you know, start pushing somebody's wheelchair. No, it's like you're you're talking with them and you're finding out how you can assist them and you're become and they're they're part of that process with you. And then also working with the hands-on side of things. That has been years of development with um, therapists and um, different medical professionals. And we actually have on staff um, Ann Yoshida, who is a um, She's one of the founding athletes. She's an adaptive athlete herself. Um, I will toot her horn and tell you that she's a Paralympic athlete and also inducted into the Hawaii Waterman Hall of Fame, what, uh, the only adaptive athlete to date. Um, but she's also has a PhD in occupational therapy. So she's our boots on the ground overseeing our training all the time. So we train, she'll develop the main training with, with experts in the different fields. And then we have our core lead volunteers and then they'll train our, our our volunteers from there in each area so and then we have a leadership committee that meets monthly if not more than that depending on what's needed to review constantly that training and what that looks like and what that process is and then with our equipment um, we're, we are always having to create um, and um, improvise often with the equipment and how we work with people but we're but what's been really amazing i feel like and and our whole team actually watching the journey of equipment and how that's developed over the years because looks matter you know image matters i mean everyone wants their sports equipment to to look great and not all, i mean yes we joke that we use a lot of duct tape and we certainly do have to use a lot of duct tape but you know we've been very proud to be part of that forefront working with um different shapers, for example, or different people making um, innovative um, beach equipment for people to be more independent at the beach. At the end of the day, like, you know, everyone's coming to the table with a different need or want or desire. But what we're looking to do is provide this experience, provide this opportunity, hoping that it will have some life changing moments, but then also paving that path 
for independence, paving that path for that for that individual's empowerment, whatever that might mean. And equipment is a big part of it. And how we'll do that is that that's a whole presentation into itself, but it's a big piece of what we do. It's a very important piece. And of course, it also is a safety aspect, obviously, since we are on the ocean. And here's just a couple of pictures of that, what that looks like. So up here in the top left is Rich again. Um, I just wanted to show this particular picture because this is an incredible photo and what years of work have done with him being a lead in adaptive uh, surfing that he talks about, you know, when he started and he's still to this day, depending on the situation, but you know, he would have to drag himself across the beach and drag a board that doesn't really work for him because he's paralyzed and he can't and the way his the way his body is laying on a board is very difficult. So what he has here on this incredible beach chair, which we didn't develop with Access Surf, but it's been over the years of working with different companies that this kind of beach chair has been um, been designed. And the piece of equipment he surfs on is called a wave ski. So he sits on top of it on on the his board. So it's kind of like a kayak, but it's not a kayak. It's a wave ski. Um, so it's really cool. And, and not only, you know, is it functional, it looks good. And he's, you know, he's a world champion, you know, and, and so he should have that kind of equipment. Any everyone should have that kind of equipment. And then the bottom left here is a is this a good example of a mini example of how our one of our training sessions will be. So the you do the online, the virtual, we welcome you, we tell you about what we're doing. And then at the at our program will break up into different groups and each of our areas have different rash, uh, rash guard colors so we know who's in each area. Um, this gentleman here in the orange, his name is Jeff, he is the reason why I'm at Access Surf because he told me about this great program after I saw a poster one day um, and he's still to this day, here we are however many years later and he still is to, to this day is a lead volunteer. Um, and he's training our swim volunteers um, for our day at the beach um, at the, and um, over in this picture. And then this one with a beach chair up here is just showing, you know, look at how beautiful and amazing this is. Actually, this is part of our international adaptive surf competition and just showing how people can work together um, to, you know, provide this great experience for people and how that piece of equipment works. But that one, it, it, it's, it's hard to be independent with. And then the bottom uh, right is Renee and she's part of our Wounded Warrior program. And she's been an incredible, um, um, individual to be <laughs> working with from when she first started, when she literally was like, I don't know if I'm going to get in the water. I'm just here. Someone told me to come. I'm just checking it out. And now look at the smile. Um, so it's a great example of a transition uh, once someone's come to our program for a little bit and what it can be like. So here are our programs. Um, <clears throat> as best as I can, again, so much detail with each of them. Our main monthly ones are our day at the beach. <clears throat> which is the first Saturday of every month with a few exceptions throughout the year. Um, as I said earlier, that one is our biggest uh, program. If we can have up to 300 people, we average about 200, about 70 participants, and then um, 130 plus volunteers, if not more, which we need every single one of them because there's just so much to do at that day. And then we have our Wounded Warrior Day at the beach, which is the third Wednesday of the month, and that is open for any active or veteran. Um, service members um, who have an injury or have um, a diagnosis and um, that one is small by design and it's intentionally on a weekday we work with the different bases and their rehab groups and then individuals of course as well but um, our day at the beach and being at the beach on a Saturday can be like, very stimulating so that's uh, when we started this program in 2011 we intentionally decided to do that on a Wednesday one it worked with the rehab groups uh, schedules, but also the beach is quieter um, and the, the group size is much smaller. It's um, usually between, you know, 20 and 30 participants for that program day. Still amazing. It's fantastic. And like I said, often, especially with this one, I will notice that people will come as a participant and then want to get involved um, as a volunteer because the majority of military want to give back and be part of the community in this give, and we hear that time and time again how grateful they are that they have an opportunity to give back again and to be part of the community, um, especially if it's a veteran and someone that's not active duty. <clears throat> and then over the years, we've developed these smaller clinics, um, one being the adaptive swim clinic, and that's for obvious reasons. You know, if somebody's wanting to learn more skills, our day at the beach and Wounded Warrior Day at the beach, 
they're very, very fun program days, but they're very busy. So it's really hard for us to actually work with individuals a little bit more on their individual needs as far as if they wanted to learn more skills or techniques to become more independent or enhance that experience. So that's why we develop these smaller clinics. So the swim, um, it could be anything. Somebody might want to be comfortable putting their face in the water. Um, sometimes we'll have people come to this program who don't come to our beach programs because it's um, not everyone wants to be in the waves. It's hard for me to understand that, but <laughs> but we want to make sure we're still providing opportunities for people to be in water and to have that experience outside of being at the beach. So we'll often run these at pools. So that's what our adaptive swim program and we run those quarterly. And again, those are also small by design because we will pair people one to one with a swim coach and then work with their individual goals um, at, the, at those programs. And then along that same line is our adaptive canoe paddling day that we've um, been doing outrigger canoe now for a few years. Um, actually, the basis of that comes from an organization called the Hawaii Adaptive Paddling Association, which was um, out of Ka Kailua for many, many years. And quick snapshot, that's actually where Accessor started. Mark and Rich met at a HAPA, Hawaii Adaptive Paddling Association uh, program. Uh, Aka Hemmings ran that program for many years and Rich and Mark met there and they said, we need to do this for surfing. And Aka was like, that's a great idea, but you need to start it yourself. So many years ago, HAPA was not able to continue with their programs and they asked if we would take it over. So we very happily have continued on with the adaptive canoe paddling program. Same thing, we run that about, about you know, once a quarter and we usually we will partner with different canoe clubs. We're currently partnering with New Hope and um, Honolulu Pearl Canoe Club on Sand Island. And then our adaptive surf clinics, again, if someone wants to learn some more skills individualized for themselves, that's what this clinic is all about. And we'll, so we have one, for example, at the end of the month where we're only taking three participants and we're gonna work with them and pair them up with a mentor and a coach that surfs in that same style as they wanna surf. And then that way they can work together on different equipment. And then this picture, um, this last one here is the adaptive uh, surfing championships. Um, so through all of this, we also are running um, competitive adaptive surfing. So the programs I just described to you are, are free programs, community based, local here on Oahu. Um, but the championships, although it is run here, it's 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 we we do it in Waikiki. It's actually a competitive adaptive surfing competition. We started that in 2007 um, as part of a, a partnership with Duke's Ocean Fest, and we continued that partnership up until 2019 when we just grew too big. Um, we were um, too big for Ocean Fest, so we started our own, where we branched out on our own to the Hawaii Adaptive Surfing Championships. And now we are part of a world tour. So there is now a uh, adaptive version of WSL, uh, which is called the Adaptive Surfing World Tour. I should probably know that name. Um, so we are the first stop on a three tour, a three stop tour annually. And um, that one is in May, May 8th through 13th this year. 100 athletes, 17 different countries. Come on down Waikiki and check us out. Um, where it's pretty exciting to see the growth of that sport and where um, that path is going. And the important piece of that, of that, the competitive side for for us as an organization, because um, sometimes we've had to analyze that. Does that still align with our core mission of you know providing these programs for our local community? And it does because what this does, well, one we have local athletes, but um, it provides this worldwide platform for uh for people with disabilities to show their abilities and to show what they can do and to, sh and to highlight their athleticism and um and that's a very proud moment for our local community and since access surf is the host of it our all of our people come out and and really cheer it on so it's very exciting and i will just end with this one of my favorite photos um, and if this is a picture from the championships, we are doing just a fun uh, surf session with everybody. And what's fun about this is it just shows how this is spread worldwide. Um, we've got Josh here from Maui, uh, Pirazzo's from Brazil, Mono is from Australia, and Sean is um, from the mainland. So we, we, like I said, it's 17 different countries that come to this competition. But for example, these people are going back to their areas and they're starting programs. So more and more accessibility and um, inclusion is happening worldwide um, based on some from some very simple, you know, kind of concepts. And of course, um, here's how you can contact us. I'm sure we'll share this with you later. 
And I'm going to stop sharing for one sec and then I'm just going to play a really short video. I just need to queue it up. So hold on one moment because like I said, I'm not always the best with the technical, but here we go. Hold on one sec. Oh, I'm flying like a fan. Access Surf is a nonprofit organization very close to my heart because it provides ocean recreation to people with disabilities. When everybody's gathered here, no matter what kind of nation, I mean nationality, disability you have, we are all one. I can get rid of my crutches, get rid of my wheelchair. Out here, I can just go and just be free. <laughs> I say, come down and share a day at the beach with us because it'll change your life. It's a wonderful program. I love the ocean. You like to surf and you like to stand up with your friends on a party wave. Yeah. We wish it was like every day. So <laughs> it's doing to me. Okay, that was all my talking. <laughs> now do I hand it over? So I thank you again. Thank you for all your time. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope that, uh, I hope you, I hope, I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You so much. I, I'd say that's a video chair up a little. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Kara. That was just so wonderful. I mean, that this program is just amazing. I, I know that everybody on this call is in awe with all of the programs and the smiles of the participants uh, just exudes the spirit and the joy that that they are uh, feeling in, at that moment that they're out on the water. Um, I, I had a two part question for you, if you don't mind. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. So uh, first, what would you say is your biggest challenge? in um, offering this program, these programs for our community, you know, members. And two, what would you say, and I know there are many hundreds, what would you say <laughs> is the most rewarding or the most incredible experience you've had while being part of this program? You know, it's so funny that you ask, and I get asked that question all the time and every time like, oh, which one? But you're right, <laughs> there is so many. But, um, but to answer your first part, um, to be quite honest, and I'm sure you, you all can understand and relate to this, um, one of the biggest issues for us is really having that solid funding and what that looks like being still quite a small organization and not a household name, you know, pros and cons to that. And, uh, you know, obviously me with my role, that's one of the number one things that I'm dealing with all the time as the executive director. So that is something that I work with my board quite a bit on. You know, and I know it's the nonprofit way, but I, I do know that there's some better ways we could be doing things with funding and looking at that in a bigger picture. So we as an organization really focused on building the programs and the foundation, as, as you heard me talk about. But really now with my role, um, you know, the next layer is like, okay, how do we make sure we keep this? How do we make sure that we make sure these programs are always here for the community? So it's a challenge. It, I mean, we're we're rising to the challenge, but it's certainly it, it certainly is a challenge, that's for sure. <laughs> and then as far as moments, I mean, quite honestly, there's it is quite sincerely every single day at the beach, I'll probably cry at least once. Um, but it really kind of comes back to the one that's my mantra that always makes me smile forever and ever and day is when when my niece Shane came and I I've been running these programs for many years and we work with all kinds of disabilities and it's just crazy all the things that we're doing and I know it and I'm always doing it but when Shane came I was like oh no 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 she's not gonna like surf we're gonna just you know get her in the we're just gonna take her in the water because again she was so high touch there was so much going on with her and I was one of our lead volunteers that was like Kara no this is what we do and I'm telling you, there was a lineup of lead people and it took them an hour and a half to figure out how to safely get her in the water and have those waves and hearing her joy. I was, I got to be on the water with her. I mean, sorry, it's, to this day, it makes me cry. It's just the most amazing thing. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. Anybody else have any questions for Kara? Comments. Aloha, Kara. I'm Diane Peters Wynn, and I'm sorry I jumped on late, but um, thank you, Anne Marie, for inviting Kara here. 
Um, I, I did know of your organization. I had two friends um, that were involved. Involved. I'm not sure if Becky and um, or them are still involved. But um, I, I just wanted to say I did not know that you folks did things in a pool setting. Um, that that was a, <clears throat> that was news to me. Um, and then also the um, your wounded warriors. I, I I know Julie, our director of service to the armed forces, is on. So maybe there's a partnering opportunity there. But <clears throat> um, I wondered, um, you know, kind of following up on um, Anne Marie's question um, about your challenges. What because um, the Red Cross we rely on uh, volunteers for about ninety percent of our work. So we're really really thinly staffed. <clears throat> I just wondered what your um, experiences were during the pandemic and oh. have you pivoted with um, your volunteer recruitment or what do you find um, most useful in trying to recruit new volunteers? It's a great question and mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and, and okay just a quick touch on the pandemic uh, um, t you know when we weren't because obviously we were not able to run our regular programs one everything was closed but also where all the things you, you couldn't be during a pandemic big groups high touch situation close <laughs> um, and what we did during that time because we were very very concerned about our community having that social connection because we are the main point for a lot of people and we were very concerned about that. So we actually did a lot of virtual, not surfing of course, but we were doing a lot of like call-in groups, social exercise stuff, those kinds of things. And in some situations we would do some one-on-one -on -one, um, when we can and when it was safe. Um, so during that time, I was very proud of our team of how we were able to still be very much part of people's lives. To be quite honest, what was interesting is it actually took more work, I feel like, than run, <laughs> running a 300 person. <laughs> Um, wow. But you're right, we did. Well, we definitely lost our momentum with our some of our, not our core core, like the main people, because they are still, they were the ones we were constantly being innovative with, but it's that next layer. And that has been a challenge. Um, so basically we're really, I don't want to say we're crying, we're crying, the sky is falling, but we do, we really put it out there a lot to our community. Like, look, we really, really need some more support. And how we get our volunteers is a lot of word of mouth. Um, and then anytime we have an opportunity to, to share, of course, luckily we're, we're very fortunate with local media because we are a good story. It's exciting for people who want to share about stuff. So we've gotten so a lot visual. of it. Very visual, exactly. Like you can see a picture and be like, oh, I get it. And what yeah. have you. We are for, very fortunate that way, but we. But all that being said, we are still we still have a solid volunteer base, and I'm not 100 percent sure why. I mean, I know why, but I I feel like we're extremely grateful. But our challenge has been making sure that the people coming consistently come and keeping up that training. So what we've been doing is trying to just touch base with them and do mini surveys of finding out what's the what's the touch point like how do we keep them coming and that and that consistency because we did lose that momentum so that has definitely been a challenge for sure mm, i see thank you well, i don't know if you're if you're aware that duke kahanamoku um in like 1917 embarked on a um nationwide tour from the west coast across to the east doing swimming um and water safety exhibitions and um it was all um raising funds for the red cross so um, we, we have that legacy and, you yeah. know, the Red Cross <clears throat> celebrating its centennial of swimming programs. So we have the swimming, the summer programs, the lifeguard certification programs. And um, in fact, the um, even the use of uh, the lifeguard towers was something that the Red Cross pioneered. So, um, you know, we we are you know, very proud of that legacy and, and uh, just a thrill to hear about all the wonderful work that you do. Well, and I'll just put that out there. I mean, I'm sure that there's multiple ways that that conversation can go, but we would certainly be open to looking at doing some work together, um, especially since you're already doing so much and you're the leader in so many ways. If there's some way that we could provide assistance for um, and any anyone that you have with a disability or anything that you'd like to, you know, tap into our resources, we would love to work with you on that. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. else has a question <laughs> the team is quiet but i did i did see we have um kara i don't know if Anne marie mentioned but we have our team is scattered across the pacific so i did see we have uh from american samoa joining us and and guam and saipan and am i so but you're you're being heard far and wide <laughs> <I appreciate it. laughs> awesome 
and, and California, yes. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> There's actually quite a few adaptive uh, water sports programs in California as well. Oh, good. I was wondering about that. Yeah. I may want to cut. Um, I may want to get in touch with you later, Carrie. This is Art Stein. I work for the mainland uh, to talk more about that because somebody had an interest in that. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll get a hold of you offline. Yeah. Please do. Please do. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Love that. Thanks. And global for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you can see the comments, but there's some nice comments. Amazing and past the tissues. The smile says it all. <laughs> Somebody said your screen was surfing. A collaboration. <laughs> and it says you can go global for Dave. <laughs> all right, Dave, let's do it. Let's go global. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. That's really warms my heart and I really appreciate it. And I think that it's fantastic that you're doing this circuit with different groups and educating yourselves about the different organizations that are out there. That's really fantastic. And, and actually, Kara, just because you're a, I saw that you're a boat person, I think you're yachting or sailing. I, maybe I asked for Dave Washburn to come on and just mention um, if if it's not gale force winds, uh, <laughs> what, what will be happening uh, in Waikiki this Saturday? Absolutely. Um, a little, little commercial for the race <laughs> for the red coming up on this Saturday the 11th uh, weather permitting um, where uh, we have um, yacht, uh, uh, two yacht clubs, uh, Waikiki and uh, Hawaii Yacht Clubs hosting this. It's a benefit for the Red Cross. Um, and uh, we hope that they will be launching um, in the morning uh, on, on Saturday and coming back um, in the uh in the afternoon um and uh they've just is the second annual event uh in honor of march's red cross month um it looks like they're doubling uh the revenues that they're bringing in uh, to support the red cross so we're just really excited about that it's gonna be so much fun what a fun creative way to fundraise i love that <laughs> it is fun any other questions for kara or comments I'll I'll just jump in and and uh, Michelle I can follow up with you since you just said it's Red Cross Month we'd love to do a little shout out for you guys with our social media stuff too um, yeah. things that you guys are doing so I can follow up with you on that as well that would be great yeah. is Matt yeah. Matt are you on Matt yeah Wells I'm here communications director Matt Wells you be the man <laughs> <laughs> that'd be great <laughs> okay. sounds good yeah awesome I have well, a question. You. Oh, um, yeah, you, you were uh, mentioning that it takes like some on the fly or adaptation sometimes to really make everything work. What was a what was one, one of those times where it's like you came up with something on the spot that you're kind of really proud of? Like we didn't consider this at all, but we got out, you know, we were able to solve the problem. Well, I, I again, it's kind of a little bit of a constant thing, but we've had one. And I don't know if it was so much the end product, but the but the individual. We had a gentleman come who just ha uh, very um, not a lot of mobility, and so uh, not a lot of function independently. And he also mm -hmm. had open trach, um, so we he really wanted to be on the water, not just what have you. So it, it it took our team a long time, and we came up with this thing where he was sitting, and we were kind of like that one picture I showed you, but picture that with a two hundred person. 200 pound person <laughs> and a whole bunch of um, uh, volunteers. But we were also trying to make the experience where he was kind of feeling some independence as well. Mm -hmm. So we just really had to get creative on how we had some padding on the board. Um, and again, we actually had cut up some stuff on the at the beach and then we duct taped it all to this board. And then we had all these people around him, but without him really realizing that was all for them. Anyway, it was a long it's a long story, but it's one of those moments where like, whoa, we just did that. That was amazing. And it just blew his mind. It was really, really incredible. And to be able to do it safely, that's the other thing. It's one thing getting on the water, but we really have to make sure that we're being safe because we're in the waves. We're, it, uh, some of our programs are flat water, but a lot are, you know, we're in the waves. Like this is like legit stuff. So he was, his name his name was David. Um, and he just talks about that still to this day that, you know, it might've taken us an hour and a half, but we did it. We got him. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Thank you. 
exactly. And, and, and I see Ambrose is on. Ambrose is uh, out in Guam. And uh, Ambrose, do you do also swimming instruction? Uh, I used to. I used to be a lifeguard uh, instructor trainer. So all the lifeguards that were all the lifeguard instructors um, actually fell under me and uh, are now doing all the instructions. Um, in addition, when I was with the National Guard, one of the things that we had we did was try to teach uh, um, uh, people that don't know how to swim, uh, mm -hmm. learn how to swim. So at least learn how to go from one end of the pool to the other end. So mm -hmm. th those were some of my water experience, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then we try to teach uh, water safety under uh, Margie. Uh, so water safety was one actually a good way of teaching people that don't know how to swim. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we thank you again, Kara, and um, we'd love to keep in touch and, and see, uh, you know, what synergy there might be, how we can support each other and uh, we wish you well and your uh, all of these uh, things coming up. Is I, I love the competitive stuff. I'm a bodyboarder, so I, I like the bodyboard pictures. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if any of you do come to a program, make sure you come up and say hi to me. <laughs> okay, we will. Yes, yeah. and I again, appreciate it. Thank you. And Marie, you want to close us? Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for all that you do for, for this program and, and for being here today. And everybody on this call, thank you for making time to be here. Uh, we have quite a number of people, and that says a lot, especially because it's a, you know, it's a busy work day and people tuning in from Guam and American Samoa, California, all over. I mean, that's really it says a lot about the people uh, in this organization, and and I'm sure your volunteers are the same way. Um, thank you, Kara. Thank you all for being here. <laughs>